Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. So Logan, of, of all the women in the Bible, mm -hmm. there, are, there are several that to me are very, very interesting. Yeah. And I think about Deborah. I'd like to know more about her, yeah. you know, for example. But in the New Testament, perhaps the most outstanding woman that I'd like to know about is the mother of our Lord. Yeah. What do you see in her life? Well, Mr. Gary, I know um, in recent times, I know you, you're probably the biggest one that does this, but uh, mentions the fact that mothers, uh, or specifically uh, mothers with small children, are always answering questions. Uh, <laughs> small children are always asking why or how is this, or but usually why is the biggest one, but that's something I'm beginning to pick up on as well, uh, especially dealing with young people more and more. Uh, now, but uh, Mary is no exception to this. Uh, she actually she answered, she asked some of the, those same questions uh, herself. Uh, looking at Luke chapter one, uh, we see this instance that uh, kind of makes me think of this. Uh, of course, in the context of, uh, from verse five to about verse thirty-eight, I would see that the birth of John the Baptist is foretold, and the birth of Christ is foretold, uh, and uh, Zacharias. Uh, who is John the Baptist's father, uh, has the angel come to him and says, your wife's going to bear a son. And in verse 18, we see his response. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 18 says, And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you fell silent and unable... or." Sorry, verse 20. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. So now, uh, really, we start off with Zechariah, and he asks this question: uh, how, how? Because I'm old, and my wife is old too. Like this, this shouldn't be able to happen. Right. Uh, so really, this idea of questions of doubt and unbelief, uh, they make God unpleased. And I think the reason because of that is really we put God in a box. Uh, we limit in what, or when we ask questions that are doubtful or really prove or are unbelieving of what God can do, uh, we put him in that box right. uh, because we limit what God, what we think what God can and can't do. On the flip side, we see what Mary uh, said to this when the angel uh, appeared, or verse 34 of Luke chapter 1. Uh, sorry, that's a little further up. Uh, verse 30 and the angel said to her do not be afraid mary for you have found favor with god and behold you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name jesus so now obviously mary and joseph are not married at this point um and so she asked this question in verse 34 and mary said to the angel how will this be since i'm a virgin see now she asked this question uh really to in my understanding to better understand what god's will is uh, and she does that uh, because she's put God first. Uh, she wants to abide in his will and the things that he has planned for her. Right. Um, and it's really interesting to see that uh, Gabriel's response, because uh, he, he really dissects what's about to happen. And I would say uh, when you have that much information, it's a comforting thing because you yeah. know what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. uh, in verse 35, the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Uh, so the Holy Spirit, or the child will be from the Holy Spirit, uh, verse 35. Verse 36, that's another comforting uh, thing to know. In verse 36 says, And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a child, and in the sixth month with her, who is also called barren. Uh, Gabriel gives this response that Elizabeth's going through the exact same thing that you right. are. Uh, and that's uh, in, to aid Mary's uh, comfort in knowing what she's about to go through. Right. Because as we know, they were about, or she and uh, her husband, or not even her husband at this point, I guess we would consider her, her fiance yeah. at this point in time. Uh, they're about to go through some stuff, yeah. <laughs> especially in that culture. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. Uh, obviously, this the very self-explanatory there. Uh, Gabriel says nothing is impossible when God is on our side. And that's uh, really... 
we can symbolize mothers today and are having their little kids answer questions. Uh, we can give mothers credit in really asking difficult questions of their children and potentially God's will for them in their lives. Yeah, to, you, you're bringing up a number of, of good points. The the one that intrigued me maybe the most, oddly enough, was the was the difference between Zacharias and Mary mm -hmm. uh, because both asked questions. Yeah. Uh, but Zacharias, as you said, probably is more of a doubting, questioning uh, type of thing. Whereas with, with Mary, it's more of an incredulous. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, she's in awe, she, but yeah. how could it be? Mm -hmm. And you're right. I think it gives her the kind of thinking that's going to be so important in raising a child. And it still is. Mm -hmm. When our children ask questions, we need to be ready to give a reasonable answer of course the angel lord you know gabriel would know the reasonable yeah. answer he comes from god we need to be sure that we're coming from god and that we're giving the best answers possible the biggest thing is that we cannot limit god we yeah. can't put him in that box that zachariah did